This is Twit. So my topic has to do with updates and security updates and OS updates. Uh, because I always love these topics where, you know, you're really focused and uh, close to the Apple ecosystem. I'm really focused and close to the Google ecosystem. And this is totally one of those stories that, that dances perfectly, uh, on both, uh, um, with both of, of those sides of the, the fence here. So we talk a lot about, um, you know, across the network, we talk a lot about phone support, uh, Apple, I would say in, in my view, I'm sure you would agree, Micah has a really great track record. As far as this is concerned, Apple devices seem to be supported super well, right? Like, and I've talked to people who are like, yeah, I mean, those OS updates, if a new OS comes out, yes, it gets updated on a lot of those like older iPhones. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Some of the features might be missing, but from my view, it's kind of like, oh yeah, but I, I mean, I get that. It, it's too bad that you don't get everything, but at least you get something that's better than the mm -hmm. absolutely nothing that you sometimes get uh, with Google. So no doubt Apple has a better track record uh, than Google and other Android OEMs. iOS 15, in fact, you already know this, Micah, but Apple plans <laughs> to support devices as far back as iPhone 6S, the iPhone 6S Plus, which ultimately that ends up being like seven years of software updates for that device, which is amazing in my opinion. Like that's just, that's remarkable that you could have a, a one device for three quarters of a decade and it's still, you know, getting these updates and stuff, regardless of if there's a couple of features missing. That's pretty awesome. Um, Google and Android OEMs, on the other hand, really pale in comparison. They're better, but they're not quite there. Google has offered um, what Intel recently was kind of like the, the gold standard for Android OS support, um, three years OS, four years security. So that's three years of, of major OS updates. So if you got your phone with Android 12, you get 12, and then you would, my, my understanding is you would get 13, 14, 15, right? Three, three OS updates is, uh, I think, what that comes out to. And then four years of security updates. So that's that's good. It used to be less than that. You used to get like two OS updates and maybe three years of security. So it's stretched out a little bit. Now you have Samsung kind of on that same train. They made a commitment to the same, um, I think it was like middle or late last year. And some of the other OEMs are kind of falling into place there. There are actually rumors now that Google might bump its commitment up to five years of updates when the Pixel Ooh. 6 is released um, supposedly next month. All hearsay, obviously, at this point, it's still a, kind of in the rumor realm, uh, but still, that would be great, yet still a full two years shy of what Apple's able to do. And there's no question there's there's something to be said there as far as like Apple's control of its OS uh, on its own devices versus Google's, you know, OS running on all different types of devices. But, you know, again, when you're looking at the Pixel, that's coming from Google. So I do believe that Pixels should be the longest. Um but the reason I bring any of this up is because there are things that are happening, at least in the EU and specific to Germany especially, um, that might actually require seven years. That five-year mark is, uh, is currently proposed by EU law, uh, by a EU law, um, that would require that five years of security updates on devices. I'm not sure if that's security and major OS, but still, it would require five years of updates, of software updates on these devices. The German federal government um, actually hopes to extend those requirements a full two more years. So that would be taking it to seven years as the requirement. And... Uh, you know, so obviously Apple, <laughs> Apple would be in the clear at least as far as the next version of iOS is concerned. Um, this would not only require software updates for that duration, but it would also require that there is continual access to spare parts that would not increase in value over time. So you'd have a device, and you'd be guaranteed seven years of being, you know, getting those software updates getting a fresh display if you happen to crack your display or uh, replacing the battery because the battery deteriorates over time. Um, I, and I do think that that's important to point out because there are certain components that like you probably aren't going to replace your microphone in your phone, in your phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, certain right. components aren't going to fail as much as something like a battery or a display, but um but so those are those are kind of in the works. The EU has a repair duration in its plan already of, of uh, five days. So that's to say that um, when you through this plan, if you were to, you know, your phone was broken and you needed to get it repaired, they want that repair to be fast because if it's anything less than fast, 
then you as a user might be inclined to be like, ah, it's going to take forever. I'm just going to buy a new phone. And they want to avoid that. They want to encourage the longevity of these devices. And uh, the German plan actually uh, has yet to determine whether that time would be even shorter. Although off the top of my head, I kind of feel like five days is a pretty, um, I don't know, pretty comfortable time. I think anyone could understand why it might take that long to repair a device or something. Yeah. But that yeah, fair. what do you think? <laughs> Well, what do you think so I far? I mean, that that in and of itself, uh, honestly, I would be pleased if uh, they were like, yeah, five days. Um, yeah. And sometimes I've, I've seen repairs take a little bit less, but most of the time it seems to take even longer. And I've been okay with it. But um, when you have devices that are uh, sort of central to what you do, then that's where it becomes a bit of an issue. Um, totally, so any yeah. sort of trying to speed that up is is quite nice unless they work with like lender devices or something. But that always ends up uh, becoming even more troublesome in my experience, um, working with a lender device in the rare occasions when they do offer that. Um, mm. I think that the uh, the idea of supporting older devices is really, really good Um mostly for the sake of kind of the false narrative that has existed that I think some people to this day still believe, uh, which is uh, sort of planned obsolescence for yeah. uh, these yeah, smartphone right. devices. And the fact, it, I mean, you and I know this, and so we can talk about it uh, for, you know, hours on end until we can't breathe anymore, but it doesn't, change that some people do feel like um, th as a new phone comes out, then their older phone starts misbehaving and doesn't load as fast and this and that and the other. <laughs> and yeah. I have certainly heard that from, because again, when you are the techie person in your family, I'm sure you've had this, you become the proxy for that whatever tech company. And so uh, I am the, the proxy Indeed. for Apple. So um, when somebody's phone starts misbehaving shortly before a new phone comes out or right after a new phone is announced, then they're letting me know that they're, you know, like you, of Lucky course, you, Micah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, this idea of of uh, repairability and uh, longevity of support, I think, helps to give an outsider's um, uh, belief that these devices are being supported as much as they can be for as long as they can be um, or close to as long as they can be, where it's not just the company itself saying, you know, because it's one thing we know, again, Apple and Google say we'll support this device for X amount of years, but to have a law that says that and then to see it in play, I think that that kind of can help shift people's uh, perspectives and go, oh, yeah, this actually is being supported for this long. And wow, a phone I bought seven years ago still works. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Or six or five or whatever it happens to be. So, yeah. All good. Um, my one concern is, as is anyone, uh, again, in our particular sort of corner of um, the internet, is security, uh, where at some point older devices do, uh, if, if they can't support the latest security technology for whatever reason, then that is something that you have to keep in mind. So um, yeah. that's, that's that's always true. something that worries me. And, you know, if, if you're running an iPhone 4 at this time and uh, Apple's no longer supporting them or a, a, a Pixel, the original Pixel or something, uh, and Google's not providing updates for that, uh, then maybe you are going to have one of uh, the exploits that has been fixed in later versions um, used against you. And that's scary. Yeah. I think one thing that I'm curious about, like uh, uh, I'm always really impressed, like when you know, I was talking earlier about a phone getting seven years of updates, because I'm like, how is, the, how is the then hardware still able to run the now software? And again, you know, Apple does this by kind of removing some features that might slow things down. I have also talked with people that are like, well, yeah, it runs it, but you definitely know that you're running, you know, an older device. Things mm -hmm. are a lot slower. It's not as snappy and everything. And so I take that and I apply that to the Android ecosystem. And sure, when you're talking about the high end, the premium, you know, devices that have, they're stocked with RAM now, you know, they got 12 gigs of RAM. They're running a Snapdragon 888. I mean, they're like as, as good as good can be in this particular moment. 
maybe that's a device that could stand the test of time, that could actually last for seven years. But the Android ecosystem is much broader than that, right? Like that's and that's one of the strengths of the Android ecosystem is that it you know, you've got your really expensive devices with everything and then you've got your dirt cheap devices and those dirt cheap devices actually do fill a need for certain sectors around the world where people just don't have a lot of money to spend on hardware, right? So they're going to get those devices and how are those devices going to do 7 years from now? I'm not so certain that they'll do very well if at all. Like like I'm not convinced that those bottom of the barrel, you know, processors that are required in these low, low cost devices could last seven years. Um, that that seems um, inconceivable to me to a certain mm. degree. So yeah. I don't yeah. know if there would be um, concessions made for it because, I mean, supporting for seven years is one thing, but, you know, if you're, if you're going to have that phone and you're on your fifth update and like every single time you hit the screen, it takes 10 seconds to refresh it, like, you know, then you enter the realm of like, OK, I guess technically it, it got its update and everything. But did it just make my phone actually worse from a usability standpoint? Maybe it's technically more secure, but I can't use it on a daily basis, you know. And so I don't know if that ends up being um, something that that we encounter somewhere down the line. Um, curious about that. But the EU does plan to introduce its proposal officially in 2023. So it's still a little ways away. They're still working on this. Obviously, Germany is trying to kind of increase things a little bit. I think the overall, my overall take on this is that I love requiring uh, device makers to uh, support for a longer period of time. I'm just really curious to, to see how this plays with the lower budget devices because I'm not, I'm, I mean, you know, intentions are great, but I'm not certain that hardware could actually last seven years. Like, I think it would actually be a really ex uh, horrible experience potentially. So. Mm -hmm.